Uh, we have a lot of fantastically talented youth in this congregation. Yes, yes. <laughs> Typically during a worship service, we refrain from applauding any of the musical pieces as our hearts are focused on um, our relationships with each other and God. But today, we're going to focus on how awesome our kids are. And anytime they're up here and finish a song, please show them how awesome they are and give them a little bit of applause. Take it away, buddy. Welcome to our first, second Sunday outdoor worship for the season. Yay for no rain. Um, it is a special worship day. I love seeing all the kids here for the blessing of the backpacks and all the teachers and administrators. And it's also children and youth led worship. So it is a wonderful day full of so many activities. I thought I should get up here and let you know. Okay. So immediately following worship in the back, there will be ice cream. And once you have your ice cream, you can go inside and go shopping at the Gift of the Heart store for um, Church World Services. This was set up by one of our youth and will be led by the youth. And then when you're done shopping, you can come into Fellowship Hall and hear all about the youth mission trip. <sighs> And then you can go home and take a little bit of a break and you can come back at 6.30, our doors open at 6.15 for an all ages movie night, popcorn provided. If you're coming, leave your chair in Fellowship Hall so you have something comfy to sit on. 
Um, bring your own snacks, drinks, and we will watch a movie. At present, I think it's Ratatouille, but votes are still coming in, so um, you'll find out when we get here. But anyway, we look forward to um, having you at that time. So now, let's all take a deep breath and settle our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. The scriptures tell us to love the Lord, our God, with all our hearts, and with all our souls, and with all our might. We approach our worship in one, setting all the scriptures also tell us to love our neighbors as our own selves. Worship God as determination to reach out care for their selves. Come near, O oh Lord. And speak to us. We come ready to listen, ready to fill with the joy and power of the Spirit. Walk with us now, because we really want to be Christian. Lord, I want to be a Christian. God, you call us to focus on you and serve you only. We confess that we often get distracted by the events of the world, by paying bills and getting things done. When we hear that you also want us to love our neighbors as ourselves, we confess, we confess that we have heard enough time loving ourselves, let alone neighbors. We want to just send money and lament tragedies from afar rather than change our lives and our, our relationships with our neighbors. Help us, Help us to defend the weak and the fatherless. Go to the cause of the so poor and the I'm in the middle. Help us see the weak and the needy in our own lives. And to act with compassion and restoration as you have done with us.
If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything is made new in Christ. We become new people all together. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and restored to our right relationship with God. Let us get up and share the peace of Christ with each other. <laughs> Peace, 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 pe
Okay. If you are a student, if you are a teacher, if you work in a school, if you homeschool, am I missing somebody? Come on down. That means you adults, that means you kids, come on over. And kids, we learned this summer from our Ojibwa friends that we are supposed to respect our elders. So if an elder would like to sit down or on a rug, and that means us children have to stand up, that's what we'll probably do, correct? Okay, come on in. Move on over. Move on over. We are very kind people. I can see you. Come on over, kids. Elsie Margaret, are you ready? Okay. All right, everybody. You want to go sit by Melina? Nope. You want to stand right here? Okay. Sweet. <laughs> All right, you ready? Oh, nuts. Okay, stand over here by me, Todd. I need some help anyway. I brought a special friend with me today. Same. Oh, hello. This is actually mine. This stays in my room. It was a gift from one of my nieces. And his name is Lammy. And Lammy is excited to go to school this year too. But you see, Lammy can't walk. And he can't get to school, which is that cart over there. So he's going to need some help. Do you think you guys can help? Oh, would you help? Okay. So but here's the thing, I just want to make sure we're clear. And friends at home, if you would like to participate quick, run, go get a stuffed animal and you can take your stuffed animal to school too. So here's how you can help. When you come up here, you're up here. Yeah. You can no longer walk either. So now we got to figure out how to get Lammy over there. But once you come up here, you can't walk. Okay. Good. Understand? Teddy, are you going to start us off? Yeah. Okay. How do you suspect we should do this? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I said this was my very special stuffed animal. We um, rolled him. I do not want my very special stuffed animal to touch the ground. Thank you for pointing that out. I do not want my very special animal to fly. I do not want him to do anything, but what? What? How do I want this to happen? All right, let's do it. Make it happen. Okay. I don't know. We're going that way. We're Straight going line. that way. Straight line. That Straight line that way. Everybody, line up. Straight line. Together. I'll stand next to you, Mom. Okay. Oh, are you going to join him? If anybody out there has a telephone, can you please take a picture? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, he's going to. He's going to. Oh my gosh, there's another. Another one. Dog's name. Tess, I wait too. Oh my god, if I get told this hard. Jack. This very exciting. I have a backpack. I'll give it to Rachel. I think it's my favorite. Come on! Let's keep it going down. Keep it going down. Yeah, pass it. Thank you. 
Pass the avocado too. Is Lammy at school? Is the avocado? Woo! Oh, is the avocado at school? Oh no. Yikes. Okay. So what did we learn from this? What did we learn, Miss Hallop? <laughs> we can do anything together. Oh. <laughs> Lambs are floppy. <laughs> so the Apostle Paul tells us that even though we're individuals, together, we make up the body of Christ. That means Jesus needs all of us together to be the hands that help, the arms that hug, and legs that move us to be with others. God has given us all different gifts to help us show God's love. Oops, here it is. This is our theme this year for our, can you hold me? Hold that, thank you, not me. But I need to go jump What's happening? I don't know. <laughs> okay, there are a lot of ways we connect together. This image of stained glass is just one example. All of the pieces are different shapes, sizes and colors, but as a whole, they make something beautiful. So as we start the new school year, I want to give you all a backpack tag. You can, um, we have a hole punch here for you. You can connect to your bag and with some yarn, however you want. And then, I want you to remember that you are like a beautiful piece of glass and God's light shines through you to share your unique self with the world. While one piece of glass can be lovely on its own, it's when all of our colors and shapes and sizes are combined together that we're extraordinary. Stand right here. You hold this and I'll walk. Beloved child of God. God pours his peace and love through you. Okay. Beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. Beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. Beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. Beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. Beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. The love of child of God pours his peace and love through you. The love of child of God pours his peace and love through you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace. The love of child of God. God pours his peace and love to you. Love child of God. God pours his peace and love to you. Love child of God. pours his peace and love to you. Love child of God. God pours his peace and love to you. Love child of God. God pours his peace and love to you. Love child of God. God pours his peace. The love of child of God, God pours his peace love to you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace and love for you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace and love for you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace and love for you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace and love for you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. The love of child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. The love of
beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. Beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. Beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. Child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. Beloved child of God, God pours his peace and love through you. And together, we represent to the whole world the love and accompaniment and embracing God's peace to make a beautiful picture for all the world to see. Your colors, your representations make a difference. Blessings to you. And have a great year. Let, let us do the litany. <laughs> Together we are the body of Christ, and we, and we belong, belong to each other. other. We can share our joy, laughter, and hope. We, we can, can share our fears, overwhelm, and sadness. When we share what is good, it, it is, is multiplied. multiplied. When we share what is hard, the load, the load is, is divided. divided. In our schools and communities, may, may we, we learn and grow. In our classes and groups, may, may we, we show support and build, build each other, each other up. up. In our homes and families, may we embody care and spark love. Together, we are the body of Christ. And we belong to each other. Let us pray. Oh God, whose love encompasses all, as we start this new school year, we offer ourselves to you. Work through us, through both our strengths and weaknesses, so that together we may be more than we are on our own. Connect us to others through your love, which is the perfect bond of unity. We pray for our students, teachers, school staff, and administrators. Through all the ups and downs this year will bring, may they know your unfailing love and their connection to this church. Like the multitudes of colors and shapes that make up stained glass, you have made each person unique and beautiful. Help us to see how we all fit together with no piece more important than another, creating a masterpiece of love. As we go out into the world, let us feel connected to you, the one in whom we live and move and have our being, the one who created all things, the one who loves us completely. Amen. Do you need me to use the mic? Yeah, all right. Let's bring it back. I'm being told I'm not loud enough. <laughs> Our scripture reading for today is found in the Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. I'm starting with the 38th verse. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist one who is evil. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your coat, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to him who begs from you, and do not refuse him who would borrow from you. You've heard that it was said, shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. 
for you. If you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you salute only your brethren, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. You, therefore, must be perfect as your Father, Heavenly Father, is perfect. Amen. never been accused before of having been too soft but here it is so when I first began reflecting on this passage some time ago I had no idea that Sunday was going to be the blessing of the backpacks um, and of all things Jesus is talking in this passage about backpacks and turns backpacks into a deep and meaningful lesson in life. So what does he have to say? Well, set into the context of turning the other cheek and 
giving our cloak as well as our coat to others. He's telling us to live in the world in a different way than the rest of the world lives, if we are to follow him. We live in an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth society. We're prone to retaliation. We seek vengeance when we are wronged. We cry out for justice when things don't balance out like we think they should. But Jesus is introducing us to a completely different approach. We are to walk the second mile. Now, Jesus is requiring us to do in walking the second mile is to move beyond justice to a third way of responding, beyond vengeance and retaliation. Walking the second mile referred to the Roman law when a Roman soldier in a country that had been captured by the Romans felt the right to bully people and would pick on somebody alongside the road and would say, here, carry my backpack, 70 pound backpack. Now the requirement was they could only force people to do that for one mile. And Jesus is saying, if a Christian is picked on by a, by a Roman soldier, he is to willingly walk the first mile with that backpack, but then go on and walk the second mile as well. In so doing, he is causing the Roman soldier to realize he had broken the law and had to reflect on his behavior. And Jesus illustrated this second mile way of acting in the story of the Good Samaritan, where the Samaritan goes way out of his way to help a wounded Jew gets medical treatment for him, secures him a room in the inn, pays for everything, and even does follow-up. He goes way out of his way, uses his money lavishly, overlooks racial hatreds in the process, and gives up a huge amount of his time and energy. We are to act like this when we go the second mile. This phrase going the second mile is a common phrase in our day. When we say that we're going the second mile with somebody, we generally mean that we're walking with somebody well beyond the normal expectations, picking up their burdens with them, and walking with them for an extended period of time and at a cost to ourselves. And why would the Samaritan do this? Why should we do this to walk the second mile with somebody? Well, Jesus simply answers it this way, because God does that with us. God makes the sun to shine on the good and the evil. He sends the rain on the just and the unjust, on the righteous and the unrighteous, we do what we do because God blesses us so lavishly. Enemy, friend, abuser, abused, insulter or insulted. Be more perfect, says Jesus. Be merciful. Be grown up in the faith. Now, this key to living beyond retaliation, beyond vengeance, beyond justice, walking the second mile, the key to this is embracing the gifts of God. Both the rain and the sun, when we accept the gift, we are putting ourselves in the same position with everybody else. Whether that person is our enemy, our abuser, our bully, our beggar, if we accept these gifts, we are no better or worse than anybody else. And our lives are to be spent in a way that we simply are saying thanks to God for what we have. Our lives and our material possessions are gifts. We are finding our strength to do the 
the third way to walk the second mile because all of the stuff that we have really nobody can take from us nobody can steal from us because it all belongs to god in the first place our rights our dignity our money our time our very lives come to us as gifts and so really no one can take that away from us because they really don't belong to us in the first place they belong to god and at that same god gives all these same things to everybody else this third way this walking the second mile with people requires us to walk in love and forgiveness not hatred not revenge not bitterness not retaliation we are not to be victims but we're not to victimize we are to step beyond victimization to mercy to maturity to extending ourselves toward those who would victimize us love your enemies says jesus and pray for those who persecute you this third way this going the second mile with folks requires practice at home with our spouse and our children at work with our boss and our co-workers at school with unreasonably demanding teachers and bullying fellow students and even at church with members who forget to say thank you and who ask us to do one more thing c.s lewis wrote in his book mere christianity do not waste your time bothering whether you love your neighbors act as if you did when you are behaving as if you love someone you will presently come to love them the difference between a christian and a worldly person is not that the worldly person has only affections or likings and the christian has only charity <clears throat> the worldly person treats people kindly because they like them the christian and trying to treat everyone kindly finds themselves liking more and more people as they go along including people they could not even have imagined that they would like at the beginning so in this world of neat transactions where we do for others so that we might get back in return we are to act lavishly we are to give to those who are our enemies, who would do us harm, who would steal from us. In a world that expects balance and fair justice, the logical eye for eye, tooth for tooth, we are to give everything we have. Christian love never settles for the reasonable, for the logical. It breaks the chain of logic and insists on giving mercy, on walking the second mile with people. Amen.
Are there any joys or concerns that you would like to share with the congregation this morning as we turn to God in prayer as a people? Anything that you'd like to share? Yes. Yes, we have two of our children and our son from New Jersey is here with our grandchildren, Ian and Caleb, and our daughter lives close to us. <laughs> I am on Jack. Okay. I got, I got a mic. You got a mic. Okay. <laughs> um, Owen, um, Owen Frederick, who is a, um, a, a son of one of my teachers, um, had some surgery, ended up with a staph infection. So he's um, home now, but it's, it's been a real, real struggle for them. So prayers for the Frederick and Scott family. Any others? Okay, let us pray. Oh God of the second mile of giving to others and walking with them and sharing their burden. As we pick up our backpacks today and go out into life, we seek to help others with their burdens at home and in school. Help us to walk with others and share their joys and challenges. Help us to be willing to bring love and mercy to each day and each person we meet. We think of others and pray for them. Hear us as we add our concerns and silent prayers. We lift them up and name them before you. Here are our prayers for them. Seeking to be loving to each other in the midst of tough choices, we lift them up for your attention and care. Hear us as we pray for them. We pray for those who are hungry and who are homeless, even within our own community. We pray for them, hear us as we pray. We pray for the people of the many troubled spots in our world who lives, whose lives are being whipped around and shattered by things beyond their control and experiencing deep tragedy, we lift them up for your care. We pray for those who are going to great lengths to bring back some measure of safety and order to troubled areas for those that go to the front line and bring your peace to walk the second mile with them. We pray for them. Even as we pray for others, we dare with confidence to pray for ourselves. We confront choices. Help us to discern your leading to feel your power and courage, and to follow where you call us to go. Help us as a congregation to raise each other up, to put each other first, and to continue to find our energy and purpose in serving you. Touch each of us in our special ministries with a fresh sense of your spirit, of your calling, 
of your grandness of purpose. Make us a people who are not afraid to serve you, not afraid to be faithful. We pray all this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now come before God expressing our thanks for the many gifts that he has given us in life through our tithes and offerings. Let us worship God. Dear God, we, all that we have and all that we are and our very lives themselves are gifts from you. We come with thanksgiving to return but a portion of your gifts to us as an expression of our faith and commitment to you. Bless our gifts that through them people might be healed and fed and clothed in your name. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
go out in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship and companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.